Howdy. My friend and colleague from the States, William, aka TN Disc Sports, just published a video where he seems to be dissing one of my favorite drills, the towel drill, and he has a substitute for it. So let's see what he thinks about it, and let's see what I think about the drill he's going to show us. Okay, so this week there was supposed to be a not in the shop video. I failed miserably at um, hitting the record button on one of the key scenes for the video that I made. So I have to go reshoot it. Just a side note, this happens to me all the time. Actually, this exact video is the second take of a video just because technology. I don't know what happened, but I just can't get it to my computer. So things happen. And I have so many unpublished videos that I made. I hit the record button, it didn't record it. This is the life of a solo YouTuber. Things don't work your way. Last week I talked about the towel drill. It's a bit bigger towel than this, but I talked about why I'm not particularly fond of the towel drill. That doesn't mean that I think the towel drill's bad. When we have the towel drill, we're looking for a snap, and you can snap a towel by snapping a towel. Well, the problem with that is, is when we're, we're practicing our swing, we can try to cheat to get that snap which will ruin our form and that's not what we want when done correctly the towel drill is fantastic the problem is is as i said we're trying to chase something versus get feedback so let's talk about how we can get feedback without this okay william has a point here but it goes to everything you do in life and in disc golf if you don't know how to make use of the tools you have, well, you're probably better not using those tools. I've made numerous videos about the towel drill, and I try to emphasize the fact that you don't snap the towel by pulling the towel back. That, that is not the way to use the towel drill. You need to swing the towel the same way as you would a disc. And if it snaps, you're doing something right. If it doesn't, you're doing something wrong. But just chasing the snap, as William says here, is the wrong way to do it. So if you don't know how to use the towel drill, don't use the towel drill, okay? Badminton racket. So you've probably seen Ricky with it. Ricky loves the badminton racket. Uh, a bunch of the other pros that work with Seth Muncy also like the badminton racket. As I remember, the badminton racket came to prominence last season. I saw Paul Macbeth swinging it. I, I think I saw Ricky swinging it. I've used the badminton racket for a couple of years now, even before I, I saw professionals using it. And I think, and as William says here, it was Seth Muncy who kind of made it popular, but badminton racket has been there for a while. And um, I think it's a good, tool for you to use it but let's see what William says about how to use it and how not to use it. The reason that the badminton racket tends to be a little bit more useful than let's say the towel drill is you get feedback but you can't necessarily cheat the feedback so the way Seth explained it to me is we're listening to where the sound of the swoosh is in the rack wow. the swoosh is in the swing <laughs> That's, that's a good one. So if we're out of time, we'll actually hear the swoosh back here versus at the hit point. Yeah, this is correct. William is 100% right here. If you throw hard enough, you are not feeling the tension here on your backpack, but actually in front of you, the same as if you're swinging a baseball bat, you're, you're not hitting the ball here. You want to go through the head, you want to feel the pressure somewhere here. So if you swing the badminton racket, you should feel the tension here. The same as with the towel, but this one gives you a more accurate feedback that you cannot cheat your way to. So I'm listening for the sound to be back later. And we can listen to that. I can hear it back here where I over, 
I got ahead of my timing versus where I'm hearing it over here. Exactly. If you hear the sound too early, your timing is probably too early and you're accelerating too early. You have to get to the hit and there is the secret sauce to bigger spin and greater speed. You want to hear it here, not here, all right? The other reason that he said he likes the Batman racket, it gives us some, some kind of weight. I'm not really sure what the weight difference is between a disc and Batman racket. I think it doesn't matter that much because a drill is a drill. It is only giving you feedback about one aspect of the throw. I mean, you can go to the gym and do, do movements there that have nothing to do with actually feeling the disc or, or anything similar to disc golf, but it's still good for you. I think the badminton racket, albeit it doesn't feel like you're actually holding a disc or, or it doesn't have the similar weight distribution as, as, as if holding a disc, it's still good for you. I mean, it gives maybe a little bit more pressure to your wrist because the weight is somewhere here and not here, as in with the disc. It's still good for you because it might even strengthen your wrist and your fingers, so do it. We're using a bunch of power and levers to create a snap here later in our swing, which a lot of people will call the hit. If we're rushing it and we're trying to swoop around too early or a lot of these other things, we're going to hear that sound here on our left side if you're right-handed versus on our right side where we want the power to come out. This is, I think, one of the best things in this video because William is using the language I'm so familiar with. I'm a musicologist by profession, so I'm trained to listen to stuff and I use my ears uh, working. So, as you have probably seen the video about Simon Lizotte and his rhythm, it goes straight back to my profession, which is in music. So, I try to listen to what I do. And I try to listen to my steps. And especially I like it because William is saying here that you have to listen where the biggest impact, I mean, where the actual crack happens. When you listen to it, you know where your acceleration hit point is. Because if you're right-handed and you listen and you hear the badminton racket swoosh on your left side, you're doing something wrong. If instead you hear it happen somewhere here on your right side, on your right ear, that is a correct feedback telling you that your hit point is somewhere here. Here, not here. It's very different sound. Uh, it's a lot louder here because you get more speed when you accelerate. And uh, that reminds me actually from, because I'm, I'm like a music history guy, from a certain composer called Robert Schumann. In one of his piano sonatas, there is this like, all pieces of music, they have like suggestions for interpretation. And in one of these piano sonatas, Robert Schumann tells the pianist to play this as fast as possible. And after a couple of pages, he corrects himself saying, play a little bit faster still. And I think this applies to the backhand throw and every throw actually, that you have to throw or move the disc as fast as you can, but you have to accelerate until the end. This goes like against uh, logic, of course, to throw as fast as you can and accelerate through the end. But this is how it has to be. You have to go slow, but still as fast as you can, but still here is the magic secret sauce that gives the spin and the speed. So with the badminton racket, you have to be fast, but you still have to aim your fastest portion of the swing to be somewhere here. And then you get the feedback that the swoosh happens here on your right ear. All right, go see William's video till the end. I think we covered maybe half of it. It's a good video and he has a lot of knowledge about disc golf, maybe even more than I do. Please subscribe to his channel. Also subscribe to my channel and share and like and do whatever it takes to make 
disc golf and my videos and his videos a little bit more reachable and viral even. All right? Happy season from where I'm, I'm in Thailand. Happy, have a nice season throwing disc golf. See you in the next episode. Bye. <laughs> what a, just keep rambling, stupid stuff.